everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with news and views from the Nefarium on Thursday, January 25th, 2023. So let's get right to the housekeeping because there's some interesting news out of Europe. Uh, we do have a vid chat tomorrow. I'm going to be starting that vid chat early. Uh, and the reason why, folks, is I recorded a show with Dark Journalist, which will be airing uh, tomorrow night on uh, Dark Journalist channel, and I wanted to be kind of present for that and in the chat room just to kind of maybe answer any questions that people might have there. So we are going to start the vid chat probably between uh, sometime between 12.30 and 1.00. Please remember the rule, get all of your questions and comments submitted absolutely no later than 10 p.m. U.S. Central Time tonight. Please try and remember uh, to limit yourself and the length of your submissions. We've had quite a few lengthy submissions, and remember, the I prefer to keep it to about two pages, no more than three at most. But uh, the lengthy submissions just kind of wear out my poor old man's voice. So, But anyway, get your questions, comments submitted by 10 o'clock tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow. Now, there's interesting news out of Europe. And in some ways, I'm viewing this news as kind of parallel to what's been happening in this country between the governor of the state of Texas, Greg Abbott, and the crooked as all get out, corrupt Swampington mess uh, headed by Biden Joe uh, over the border situation. And of course, Governor Abbott has recently issued a letter in response to the Supreme Court decision that allowed the federal government to take down the border wire. Now, you'll notice that the Supreme Court decision did not say that Governor Abbott could not put up more border wire. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's really an interesting case, but there is pushback, in other words, against central government corruption. And since Abbott's announcement, the governors of other states in this country are pledging their support of him. Well, in Europe, you have a similar, if not much worse, situation with the EUPU, as I like to call it, because there you have a government, so-called government, almost entirely done by bureaucracy. The people of the individual uh, semi-sovereign nations of Europe really no longer have much say-so. And you're watching all sorts of pushback. Farmers in the Netherlands, in France, in Germany are pushing back against this regulatory state and the nonsense coming out of lion funder lion's lips. But the interesting thing is the smaller countries in Europe are simply refusing to play ball. And I'm referring, of course, to Prime Minister Viktor Orban's Hungary. And now, recently, the newly elected Prime Minister of Slovakia is saying some interesting things. I've got a couple of stories linked here to what he's been saying. And incidentally, these stories are from just yesterday. So Wednesday, January 24th, this is the latest news hitting. And the first story is titled, The Ukraine Will Have to Accept Territorial Losses in Peace Negotiations. Three quick paragraphs here, folks. Quote, Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico continues to make headlines with his seemingly uncompromising stan pardon me, stance on the Ukraine, saying many forbidden truths, including the most taboo one. Kiev will have to cede territory for peace. Probably a lot. And now we're citing Prime Minister Fico here directly. Quote, there has to be some kind of compromise, Fico told Slovak pro public broadcaster RTVS on Saturday, according to media reports. What do they expect? That the Russians will leave the Crimea, Donbass, and Lugansk? That's unrealistic, unquote. Now listen to this. The Slovak prime minister's interview comes ahead 
of a meeting between the Slovak leader and the Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmihal planned for Wednesday. That would be yesterday. I will tell him that I'm, in, I'm against the membership of Ukraine in NATO and that I will veto it, Fico said, referring to Shmihal. It would be merely a basis for World War III, nothing else. So, you can add, in addition to Hungary's veto for the Ukraine entering NATO, you can add Slovakia's. But now there's another article that's even more interesting. I want you to pay attention to this one because this article and one statement in it is kind of the basis for what I think may be going on behind the scenes. Remember, Slovakia, if you go back to the era of the Cold War and look at a map of Europe and look at Czechoslovakia, Slovakia is that part of what used to be Czechoslovakia, that long, narrow finger that kind of stretched down between Poland and Hungary. That's Slovakia, all right? So here we go. The title of this article is Slovakian Prime Minister Fico will veto the Ukrainian NATO membership bid no more military aid to Kiev, and he supports Hungary's Orban against EUPU pressure. So here we go. I'm going to read a few paragraphs from this article, but there's one paragraph in particular I'm going to be drawing your attention to. Here we go. Quote, the new Slovakian prime minister, Robert Fico, has publicly confirmed what he had been saying since his campaign. He will not follow the previous government's policies towards the Ukraine. In fact, FICO has now vowed to thwart Kiev's plans in a number of ways, from vetoing their NATO membership to stopping all military aid, up until joining Hungary's blockage of the EUPU's 50 billion euro package. Now I'm skipping down to a quotation from Prime Minister Pico. Quote, I know what I'm going with to the meeting with the Ukrainian Prime Minister. I'm going with humanitarian aid. We'll confirm that they will not receive any weapons from the Slovak army and from state warehouses. I'll say that there are things on which our views are completely different. I will say that I am against the Ukraine's membership in NATO, that I will use the right of veto and block it, because this will be the foundation of the Third World War, unquote, Fico said on Saturday. Now I'm going to skip one short statement that I will come back to and read, and we're going to skip toward the end of this article. At the same time, the Slovak Prime Minister is convinced that the Ukraine will never join NATO. Additionally, Fico believes that the Ukraine needs years to join the European Union, but he will not oppose this accession. And finally, that means that Fico half-heartedly supports the Ukrainian EU accession, but not the financial aid, and backs Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban's fight with the bloc. Now listen carefully to this. The FICO-Orban alliance is unusual, but the leftist Slovakian and the Hungarian right-winger seem to have found a lot in common. And it's important to remember here, folks, in this connection, that both of these leaders, these European leaders, could be reasonably considered to be populist leaders. So you have a populist leftist and you have a populist rightist, and they're making common cause against the political bureaucratic global only leadership class in charge of the EUPU. Now what's going on here? I have a suspicion, obviously, and the suspicion is revealed by this one sentence in this article. Quote, Slovakia has sent 13 packages of military assistance to the Ukraine worth, listen to this figure, folks, worth 671 million euros so far. That's almost a billion euros, folks. It's well over half a billion euros. That's a lot of money 
for a small country like Slovakia to be sending in military aid. So what I suspect is, first of all, that Slovakia was being used as a conduit to launder or transship weapons from the European Union powers and probably from this country to the Ukraine. And that to a certain extent, Slovakia was being asked to foot some of the bill. Now, it's that involvement that suggests to me that this sudden turnaround by the Slovakian government, and again, it's only a suggestion, this is pure speculation because this is basically a breaking story in the last couple of days. But my speculation is the Slovakian prime minister would not have done this radical of a shakeup without some sort of approval or prodding from some one or group of the European powers, probably, probably nations like Italy or France or even Spain that have been having their problems with the EUPU. And you'll notice that President Macron has been kind of backpedaling on some of his policy announcements. But my point here is, is that I don't think Slovakia would be acting entirely on its own in this respect, even with Hungarian uh, support. So this news may be heralding something much bigger. It may be heralding the fact that the EU now is behind the scenes, quietly exercising some pressure on the Ukraine to come to the negotiating table, and they're choosing Slovakia to deliver the message, which I don't doubt may be part of the reason for the summit between the uh, Slovakian and uh, Ukrainian prime ministers, that he might be the chosen messenger, go to the peace table, negotiate your way out of this war, we cannot support you anymore, we're not going to support you anymore, and you're going to have to lose some of the territory. Uh, this may be some very interesting news. If my suspicion is correct, we're going to watch this story develop in the coming year. If not, uh, then we're going to have to go back to the drawing table and reassess what the political situation on the ground over there is. I suspect something else as well. I suspect that you're going to see these leftist populist leaders in Eastern Europe quietly begin holding the door open to more negotiation, to more cooperation with Russia and some of its satellites, Belarus and so on and so forth. So this may be a big shakeup in the, in the making, folks. We're just going to have to watch this one carefully. All right, that'll do it for today's news and views. Don't forget, get your comments and questions in no later than 10 p.m. U.S. Central Time tonight. And don't forget that we will be starting the vid chat tomorrow on an earlier schedule due to uh, my appearance on Dark Journalist. So that's it, folks. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye, and God bless.